Our meeting tonight is now open for the sharing of testimonies of healing through the study and practice of Christian science. Mara from Mississippi, go ahead, please. I'm so happy to be a part of this meeting tonight. I'm so grateful that I found the Plainfield Christian Science Church. I'm very thankful for all that I'm learning from everyone here, especially my practitioner. Christian Science is such a comforting, happy, and fearless way of life. And the members of Plainfield are such great role models of Christian Science. I love how we are taught at Plainfield to pray and watch for our world. Uh, we are taught to pray everywhere we go and, pr and pray for everyone we see around us and also to love everyone. We learn how God is love all around us and always there for us. My life has changed so much for the better in such a short time. And I've experienced many healings as well. Um, I thank you so much for the work that you all do to keep this going. And thank you for the music. And thank you to Craig for the readings tonight. Thank you. Luann, New York. Luann from New York. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Well, this morning I went outside and the entire yard was filled with the haze of smoke <clears throat> from the wildfires in Canada. I could barely breathe. Um, it was really disturbing because it kind of scared me a little bit that the air was so thick with the smoke. So about 10 a.m., I wrote to my practitioner about it, and she guided me to work with her testimony, Heaven's Own Healing Air, on our church website. I listened to it several times, and all I could think of the rest of the day was breathing that love of Heaven's Own Healing Air from Hymn 195. By 4 o'clock, the air quality was so much better, and I could barely smell smoke in the air. The air pollutant levels dropped from 100 down to 41, and it started to rain in a very large area here and across the border into Montreal and Ottawa. I'm so grateful for all the help with this and all the work my practitioner and the entire weather committee did to turn this situation around. It's uh, very powerful, the work that they do, and I saw proof of it today. So thank you very much. Thank you. Elizabeth, New Hampshire. Elizabeth from New Hampshire. Go ahead, please. Good evening. Thank you for those wonderful readings, reminding us of our most important job ever. Tonight, I would like to express my gratitude once again for the Plainfield workers and the wonderful resources they have afforded for all on their website. Most recently, I've been feeling some anxiety in my life. In our so-called retirement from our other careers, my husband and I had purchased some apartment buildings. It was a wonderful blessing for us as we went about working together on the renovations therein. With his sudden passing several years back, it seemed a very daunting reality for me that I was now faced with managing this alone. Gratefully, Mary Baker Eddy's Christian Science gives us a whole different outlook on reality. Christian science teaches us that we are not mortal or material and not subject to human laws. We are under God's law only when we understand it, acknowledge it, and obey it. Nonetheless, I was sleeping at the switch and let a belief of anxiety in, accepting personal responsibility for the upkeep of these buildings. Contemplating this, something that's often said at the Plainfield Roundtables, and in the Bible, to remember that everything that God has done for you, and certainly it has been absolutely amazing what God has done and is doing. I was basking in the gratitude of that thought when I was led to the article entitled Possession by Adam Dickey, and read so beautifully, I believe by Karen, one of the Plainfield workers. I had read this in the past, but it took on a particular new meaning for me at this time. 
Mr. Dickey says so plainly, and I quote, If a man is engaged in a business which he believes to be his own, of which he thinks he is the creator and proprietor, and for the success of which he deems himself personally responsible, there may be a great sense of burden attaching to his position. The remedy for this condition is for the man to begin to declare and to know that all is mind and mind's ideas, that there is nothing whatever about his business that is limited or material. He goes on further. If God is the creator of all, and if everything in the universe belongs to him, then this business which the man calls his own is really God's, and the man becomes the master of it only to the degree that he conforms his thoughts and his daily transactions to the law of God. If he recognizes this and applies understanding of the principle of Christian science to his work, his fear and uncertainty will vanish." Unquote. I am so very grateful for the opportunity to know and to apply the truth of God's law in a practical way to what is termed my life and my business. The comfort of knowing that it is all God's is beyond measure. Thank you so much, and good night. Thank you. <laughs> Jeremy. I am very grateful to be a member of this church and for all I am learning here about Christian science. I have now been a part of this church for 10 years, and I just want to take a moment to say how grateful I am for this church taking me in and giving me a place and a purpose. In the time immediately before I was brought here, I was at the lowest point of my life, and I now know it was God and the prayers of my practitioner which paved the way for me to come to Plainfield and start this new life that I am so grateful for. What a wonderful 10 years it has been, filled with much needed healings and blessings and a lot of good work. I have changed so much since being here, and all of it is for the better. Anyone who says that Christian science is not effective has not put in the honest work because I was lost, useless, and suicidal, and now I am where I'm supposed to be and useful to God and so thankful for my God-given life. Thank you to God, Christ Jesus, Mary Baker Eddy, my practitioner, and this church for all of it. Thank you. Now we have a testimony from Imogen in Australia. Good evening. Tonight I offer my deepest thanks to the Plainfield Independent Christian Science Church and our holy practitioners here. We are taught such wonderful truths in Christian science at this church. I'm so grateful for all the learning so that we can develop our close relationship with the Father that he is ever with us. I was walking along our street the other day. I was loaded up with a big backpack full of a whole bunch of stuff that I was carrying for some renovations that we were doing. Out of nowhere, I tripped, flew through the air and landed with full force on my left side on the gravelly road. I don't even know how it happened. It was like my feet were just taken out from under me and I was moving at quite a pace, so I had quite a bit of momentum. I'm just so grateful because it happened so quickly, yet through God's love I was able to get my arms out of my backpack and be safely tucked, protecting my neck and head, to land on impact on my left shoulder and left hip. There was a beautiful family nearby and they all ran over to help me. They were so sweet. They picked up my backpack, which was a couple of metres or around seven feet behind me, and gave me back all my things, dusted me off and looked after me. They were all so sweet. Now, I had a moment of absolute fury that I had fallen like this, but I am so grateful to say that all the great teaching we get here on a regular basis is chiseling away at that human characteristic of fury. So I just took a deep breath and I recalled a wonderful testimony given by Linda a couple of weeks ago where she fell and immediately her fellow church member said, there are no accidents in God's love. Now this is something we are told very often by our practitioners here. There are no accidents in God's love. Everything that happens to us is God's love, and there can be no accidents in God's love. 
So all these things were going through my mind as this lovely family were helping me up off the ground, helping me get my shoulders back into my backpack, and I just walked on off. My hands, elbow, shoulder, hip and knee were totally uninjured, not even grazed by the gravelly road. By the time I got home, I was so well recovered that it was almost like, did that actually happen? (laughs) It was amazing. So before coming to Plainfield Independent, I could never have dealt with a fall like that with such efficacy in Christian science. I have been listening to a great article, The United States of America by Bicknell Young on the church website. I work with this article often. It's fantastic and read with such holy power. Laying in bed that night, I was listening to this article and my thoughts were thrilling as the reader finished in Mrs. Eddy's words, quote, Thy kingdom is come, thou art ever present. End quote. This was a powerful Christian science treatment, and I went to sleep knowing I had no injury, despite this rough fall on the gravelly road. And of course, waking up the next day, no problem at all. My back was fine, my neck was fine, no grazing or bruising anywhere. One of my favourite little cardigans got a tiny scuff mark on the elbow, but that's it. So thank you to our wonderful, holy practitioners for the beautiful teaching we get here. God is wrapping every single one of our footsteps, even if we find ourselves flying through the air and landing on gravel. I'm just so grateful for God's love and care. I'm so grateful for the wonderful example that Christ Jesus gave to us. And I'm so grateful for Mary Baker Eddy who discovered Christian science. It is a science and it works with mathematical precision. Thank you also to Linda and the fellow church worker who said immediately, no accidents in God's love. What a great treatment. Thank you all and have a beautiful night and so much love to you all. Thank you. And now we have a testimony from Izzy in England. Good evening. I would like to express my gratitude for a wonderful trinity of things that came to us from the Plainfield Church. Firstly, the lesson on ancient and modern necromancy, alias mesmerism and hypnotism, denounced. Then came the Thursday Unity Watch. And lastly, the icing on the cake, the round table on Sunday, May 28th. This lesson was such a powerful instruction that I found really helpful. In particular, the story of Jehoshaphat and how he turned to God when he was literally surrounded by attackers. It can really feel these days as though error is coming in from all sides. And what a powerful story this was, full of actions to study and to learn what to do and be guided and instructed on how to handle so many situations. Plus a really good taking down of animal magnetism and yet more instructions on how to deal with the whole of that side of things. The Unity Watch then came in as a kind of backup to the lesson. It reinforced that through Christian science, we have the tools we need to handle whatever comes at us. We always use the Thursday Unity Watch in our little European Sunday evening watch group. And this was a really good one to work with. So thank you to the the Unity Watch writer. And then the round table. Well, they're always such a treat to listen to. But this week particularly was just so good. I need to listen to it again and again about a million times. But there were some absolute nuggets of instruction of how to work, how to stand against the suggestions, how to do so much. Together, these three things made for me an absolute feast of Christian science instruction and inspiration. I always knew that Christian science was pretty fantastic and that it was the answer to so many so-called problems. But it wasn't until I found Plainfield that I began to catch a glimpse of what it really is, or what it really can be, and how to do it. I'm just so grateful to be on this journey of learning and unfoldment. Thank you so much to everyone who puts in so much time and effort to make everything happen that happens at Plainfield. 
You are all so very appreciated. Thank you and good night. Thank you. Mishayila from Canada. Go ahead, please. Thank you for the wonderful readings tonight and the lovely hymns. I want to tell tonight about uh, my experience with Father. In the beginning of working with a practitioner from this church, she spoke about God as Father to me. And I told her that I always had difficulties naming God Father. And that this may be because my human father did take his own life when he when I was a child. So I never had this had a relationship to my my human father. And I did not foster one to my heavenly father. Now after working with my practitioner and through all the resources resources on this church's website and all the activities, it is becoming easier for me to accept God as Father who protects me. A couple of weeks ago, when I was faced with a physical indisposition, I prayed and listened. I listened to what I need to know. This angel thought came to me My father loves me and has made me perfect. I think that was the first time that such a thought from my heavenly father came to me. And it was so very comforting to know that I have a father in heaven, that I can lean on him, as my practitioner said. This is so wonderful and release me from much pain I had felt in the past. When I wrote this testimony, this thought from Science and Health came. The, to those leaning on the sustaining infinite today is big with blessings. I am so very thankful for all the activities at this church, for the kind practitioner support and all the resources here and to learn that I can lean on him. Thank you. Thank you. North Carolina. Tony or Lenny from North Carolina. Go ahead, please. Thank you, Craig, for those readings tonight. Um, you know, the, the workers in Mary Baker Eddy's home uh, in Pleasant View, they, they definitely learned what it meant to watch. And um, reading the Greco book, they, they didn't refer to it as Pleasant View. They referred to it as Fort Besieged uh, because of all the storms that were always coming in on them, and they learned how to overcome them all. A couple days ago, I was experiencing a prolonged headache, and um, in addition to that, for a couple of days, I've really been struggling with a, kind of a just a dark sense. It's kind of hard to describe, but when you don't, when you can't think clearly, and you can tell there's there's interference, and you're trying to you know work to get over that and, and get on top of that. Um, but I wasn't having any success with that. <clears throat> um, a couple months back, I started a, a website about Mrs. Eddie, and it just occurred to me that I needed to go do some work, and I wasn't going to let this um, get in the way of me and my way of thinking about it was of helping Mrs. Eddie, uh, because we do have a duty to our leader. So, I proceeded to uh, update the web page. I made another article. I think I recorded a testimony. And about 30 minutes later, I realized that my headache was completely gone. But more than that, the the darkness and the clouds, the the interference 
was co- obliterated, completely gone. And I felt so crystal clear in my consciousness and in that place, I just began to feel this great sense of peace. And um, it, this has been taught before here at our church that you know when we're not feeling well, we don't think inwardly. We want, must think outwardly and uh, that unself love. And I just am <clears throat> very grateful that I was able to uh, kind of experience that in my own life. And I just want to close by, by saying that I was reading just recently, someone came to Pleasant View to help Mrs. Eddie. Her name was Mrs. Sweet. And she was injured uh, almost upon arriving. And the other scientists there were unable to heal her. And this is, they'd heard about this. And she went to her and she said, how's it going? You know, how are you? She says, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. You know, we're, it's being handled. She says, no, you're not fine. How are you handling this? And she says, well, we're, you know, I've been praying to know there are no accidents in mind. She says, no, that won't work. She says, you're helping me. You have to handle the fact that there's a claim that you can do no good for me, that you can't help me. And she was healed instantly at that moment. And I thought that was an interesting um, reminder to all of us that uh, when we go about to do our work, remember who we really are supporting and, and, who we're, and who we're working for and make sure we get to the bottom of the claim. So uh, thank you all tonight. Um, pleasure to be here. Thank you. Sandy from North Carolina, go ahead, please. Good evening. Um, thank you for the service uh, tonight and the reading. I just want to echo one the the previous testifiers about these wonderful articles they send your website or the Independent Christian Science in Jersey. The Adam Dickey he got two articles. Uh, the love of adjustment and the love of possession. Like the one previous testifier who spoke about uh, even trying to take his life, how this church and the teachings of Mary Baker Eddy has changed his life. Um, um, we are learning. It, it's been uh, my husband and I was dealing with a legal situation and also a, we ended up paying a lot of lawyers a lot of money and the case didn't wait the way. I didn't want to interfere. He stopped uh, practicing the rules and more of enough of the mother church and Mary Baker Eddy instruction. So I ask Father Mother, Divine Mother, Father, let me pray. In reality, we are one in the Divine Mind. So I started using the law of adjustment. And like the previous testifier say, it, that it works. But I need to see it myself. Because in the Divine Law, sometimes we find ourselves in situations that uh, we feel hopeless, but in every situation, is the law got applicable, and we all know that Adam Dickey was the personal secretary for Mary Baker Eddy, and he was an attorney here in the United States. And the counsel of Mary Baker Eddy said, it, 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 it help you nothing. Don't interfere. And um, so I started doing I did it for months, but I couldn't see it myself because in my heart was full of resentment for the other person. That person was a child of God, too, and I declared her innocent, too. And, and we just want a furnace. At this point, the love of a judgment, we didn't need a lawyer. We went and declared the truth, the truth of God. In the case and the amount of money that we was paying went and decreased and went to the rightful price. And it's all I needed to see 
all the parties with the love of God. And I practice the love of a German. I got it for the independent, uh, <laughs> independent New Jersey Christian scientists. Recently, we also find ourselves, we, we have a very expensive home, and the mortgage is extremely expensive. Uh, we was in a situation that we say we couldn't afford this home and how we're going to pay. So every three o'clock in the morning, I will do the law for possession. This home doesn't belong to me. It belongs to God. And it because belongs to God, that's his business, how this home will be paid. How the money will not come is not my business. Divine mind is soften. God is soften. And this is to the teaching of Christian scientists. So the money has come, not only to pay the mortgage, it's in a, enough money to meet our human needs. But it took me, uh, I've been working with the law for possession, like the previous testifier. I was carrying that burden on my shoulder. Nothing belonged to us. We it belong to God. And these two articles, the law for possession and the law for judgment by Adam Dickey, I'm so grateful that you guys are publishing these things. And it's, it's blessing. It's, just, it's blessing so much. I don't know what my life will be and my husband will be or my children without the teachings of Mary Baker Eddy. But I like the way that you guys, the round table, you explain it very clearly. And remember, all happen in consciousness. So the saying healing, the Arandiki brought back in the day, is still here because these are the truth of God. And the dedication and the effort, the Mary Beth, Florence, uh, Bruce, everybody, the family of Christian Scientists in New Jersey are putting in this website to bring this a helping and a work. But we have to... We have to feel it. We have to love it. And we have to follow according to the instruction of Miss Mary Baker Eddy. I'm grateful for Jesus Christ, the way short, and for Mary Baker Eddy to have the key, the unlock, this science, that the, it's, mathemat- it's perfect, and it do work. But we have, to, we have to do the lesson, and we have to be obedient to truth. And God is true. Thank you so much. Have a blessed evening, everyone. Thank you. Linda. Thank you. Thank you very much for the readings tonight. I want to express my gratitude for how God helps us in our work for him. Recently, I was challenged with uh, lots of uh, schedule changes and managing projects and some were conflicting activities in a limited amount of time. And then I forgot something to do on top of that that I needed to do. I was tempted to compare myself to how others were working. But since we have different callings and demonstrations and lessons to learn, that was a dangerous temptation that leads away from godlike thinking. I regularly work with my Plainfield practitioner I'm very grateful for her prayerful support of my work and instructions in how to pray about it and daily work for myself. So I took time in prayer and thought about each activity one one by one, and ideas did come. I also prayed for myself, handling any sense of worry, tiredness, etc and checked my motives, and as I did this, I gained clarity. A time period opened up, and the work was completed in exactly the amount of time, and everything done that was needed to be completed was completed. Not only that, I had energy and peace and time for reading. It has been another great lesson for me to focus on God and to turn to Him for strength and intelligent action. I was awe-inspired to see it all fall into place. And not only that, another point of that weekend, I was able to work ahead for the next week. It was amazing how projects come 
uh, just uh, when we need, we, we have time for it if we uh, just step back and let God work. Last night's Unity Watch was a beautiful prayer for workers, for God. We have all different callings and for different reasons, and each to fill a unique need. I'm slowly realizing that these challenges that come to us help us learn to lean on God and demonstrate. Otherwise, it would be very easy to fall back on the human effort and thinking. And we need to let God show us how to use our time and energy. And from the watch, we were reminded, quote, that in every unselfed action we are led to make is governed by God. And I loved how they used the seven synonyms. Also, they said, quote, we do our work with joy and gratitude because it is all God given. God and his idea cannot be separated. And it ended with the idea that all that he gives us is to do is possible. And I just thought it was very beautiful. I'm very grateful for our unity watches. They are so powerful and healing. I'm so grateful to be part of this mission. I'm grateful for all that we are learning of Christ Jesus and Mary Baker Eddy, all that she sacrificed, and all the workers that have been gone ahead of us and all that they did so that we could have it now. Thank you. Thank you. California. Kelly from California. Go ahead, please. Hi. Thank you for the readings, Craig, and the music and all the testimonies. I'm so glad to be at the church tonight. It feels like home. And I, I had my um, sister came back to Christian Science after being gone for a long time. And she told me something interesting. She said, um, she's starting to praise God in, in ways that she's never praised God before. And that totally reminded me of my experience at this church. And then, um, and then I gave her the website, and she thanked me for the gem. She says, thank you for the gem. So, um, you know, she's probably reading the website. <laughs> it's a beautiful website. It's so pure and full of so many gifts. And the same sister, when um, on my birthday, she gave me these socks from Vermont. They were really nice socks. And I'm not feeling well, so I wanted to wear them. And I remember Mrs. Eddie, she wants the best. <laughs> so I thought, I am getting my socks. <laughs> and um, I was looking and looking for days. And then um, today I was looking and I saw, I caught myself telling myself, God's punishing me. And I told myself right away, that is such a lie. And right there when on my next look, I saw the sock just nestled in between two pieces of clothing. And I think that went well with my sister and, and um, just how God works in my life. Um, he does not punish. God does not punish us. And testimonies are so great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, Shardell, thank you. Go ahead, please. Good evening. I am grateful for these Wednesday services and the, how they have become an integral part of my growth in Christian science. In particular, recently, someone testified about handling the creeping suggestions of aging. We have many prayers and articles that help us with this issue. Mrs. Eddy talks about the body and says, loose it and let it go, for it is God's body. Another favorite is from Genesis 17. I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And then Vic Nell Young from his article, Finance. Instead of wasting time trying to demonstrate youth and rejuvenation, we should gradually see that to know a right, 
the Christ principle, which was before Abraham and is life eternal. So I keep going forward, busy as ever, working for God and sharing his love wherever I go and sharing God's truths with my grandchildren. Several sneaky pains have been faced and have vanished. This is all made possible because of patient practitioner support and learning here at our Plainfield Church, Christian Science Church, independent, how to watch and pray. This church teaches the Bible and all of it and what Mrs. Eddy has given us to learn and study. I am grateful to be a loved child of God, an earnest student of Christian science, and a member of this church. Thank you. Someone's calling from 509-936. Can you please identify yourself and go ahead with your testimony? Yes, this is Mark. And do you hear me all right? Who is this? Uh, my name is Mark Strong. Oh. Yes, please, go ahead. We can hear you fine. Okay, great. Um, yes, thanks for the reading very much. Very inspirational. And also, I wanted to be in this lesson, there's God the Preserver of Man. I thought it would be um, a good time to give a testimony regarding my time in combat. And uh, I, was a, uh, I was a pilot a helicopter pilot. And it was, I'll just get right to the point of it. Um, I was up in the north uh, part of South Vietnam, right next to the DMZ. And that was the first mission that I put in out of 700 missions. And I was to fly into, with me and my crew, we were to fly into uh, North Vietnam. And uh, there was really no way we were going to, it appeared that we were going to make it back. It was so extremely dangerous where we were going. And I was, I was quite afraid. And at that point, I thought, Father, if you can help me on this, I'll be fine for the rest of the tour. So about five minutes before we cranked up the ship and ready to head out from the right side, the South China Sea wasn't very far away. Here come this, looked like a death storm in the 30s. It was coming right for the ship from the right side, and it covered us completely in a fog. It just happened so quickly. And the mission was canceled. And that was, um, from that point forward, I realized I was just, just turned 21 years old. And from that point forward, I knew that it was going to be a very interesting and protecting experience. Anyway, so that was number one uh, to begin with my experience. Midway through uh, up north, I was up north in the uh, I Corps. Um, we were bringing in a, we had a, our ship was full with alerts, long range concert patrol. We were to set them off. Uh, near uh, a, a place called Quan Tri, up in the Oshawa Valley. We were circling in an area that looks, that's where we were going to drop the, the lurks, and we saw two Marine Chinooks, 46 Deltas, that were on the ground in the jungle, lots of trees around. So we decided to go ahead and do a lazy surgeon, which is circling the area until they departed. As we made our, as we made our uh, first uh, loop, I was in the right seat, and the commanding officer, or the commander, or the ship commander, was in the left seat. He'd been there about six months. I'd been there about three months. Uh, yeah, all of a sudden the ship. It's like we took a ground to air missile. The whole ship just completely. Shook. I mean, I, it, it was very a violent action. Our blades were suddenly bent, or mass were bent, and I suddenly looked to the right, and what had happened is the Marine helicopter, one of the Chinooks, came right up through us on the right side, 
and the first thing that happened is the command, the aircraft commander, uh, completely panicked and lost it, and he was doing our uh, ship was damaged quite severely. And like I said, we were full. The ship was full of loose. And the first thing that came, I thought, was this is not going to happen. I was totally calm, and I screamed at the uh, at the aircraft commander. Told him I had the controls, and I did exactly how my father was controlling uh, what I was going to do. So I went ahead and I dropped all the power out of the blades. I started a, a descent into the jungle. Long story short, we made it, and everybody was, uh, unfortunately, what would happen is part of the ship that was uh, the, the marine ship had ripped apart, and the part of it was going down in flame. The other part, they had the engine and a, another, and a blade, was going around like a boomerang, and I had to try to miss it. It was coming right for us. I had, I lost my hydraulics, so I was... My ship was like a DC-3. It was very latent to controls, but we met, it missed us. And we hit the ground, and everybody was, was we all survived. We crashed to the ground. And uh, anyway, another, the other Chinook came in, and, and, uh, and we all jumped into that Chinook. He had just enough room to land, and we made it. And that was a wonderful demonstration, sort of like, uh, why God's a preserver of man. And um, just real quickly, um, I was the 13th ship in a flight of 13, and I was the last ship. We were trying to, uh, we were trying to um, evacuate all these um, villagers that were, the village was being under attack by the, uh, by the VC and the uh, uh, NVA, the North Vietnam regulars. And they were setting fire to the village. I was the last ship. I was in front of the village, and there was several people that were on the ground, mainly um, uh, women and uh, elderly men and kids. And it was a very hot day. Anyway, I went ahead and I told them, put everybody on. We're either going to take everybody or, or, or we're going to stay behind. So I put every, we put everybody on. There was a lot of people. I was way overloaded. I brought the ship up to a hover, and I only had a portion of my required RPMs. I only had about 6,400 RPMs. You should have 6,600 takeoff. Anyway, and in front of us was a field of three-foot high stumps. And so I take off, and I'm scraping the stumps, and I'm slowly getting altitude. But we were able to get enough altitude, and we went right through the tops of trees. My blade was chopping the tops of the trees, and we were able to make it over the mountain and and do a, a precautionary landing because we couldn't fly much further. And then uh, I just there were so many things. I'll just real, I'll be real quick because I don't want to take too much more time. Uh, I was on top of a, a fire support base out in the middle of uh, the jungle, up not too far from the Arshaw Valley. And uh, we were waiting. We'd been there two days because of the weather, and I was uh, alone on top the mountain. Everybody else, there was the South Vietnamese were there. It was 155 Howitzer. It was a fire support base, very small little mountain top. So I started to walk forward to look over the edge of the hill, and I tripped a Claymore mine. That's a defensive, uh, um, destructive mine that's about they they placed in front of the uh, compound. Anyway, it blew me up into the air, and I did a backflip, landed on my back, and the first thing I did was just kind of I just lay there. I was totally uninjured, and uh, all this time I have my science and health with me in my helmet bag. And during Vietnam, every time we stopped between missions, I would start reading where I was at. And one great, wonderful um, thing that I read, my mom sent me in a plaque, was um, what our leader says. I think it's page 210, um, Christ Scientist and Miss Laney. And uh, I always, I kept close to that. And uh, and anyway, the last mission, I told you about the first one that, that knew I knew then that I was, I was under God's care. 
Thank you very much. God does protect. Thank you so much. Florence from Georgia, go ahead, please. Yes. Uh, okay, I'll be very quick. Um, the readings tonight, thank you, Craig, so much. Because the readings tonight made me really think about a, a testimony. One evening I was walking, and it, our duty, as Mrs. Eddy said, is to watch, walk, work, and pray. I was walking, and I saw a neighbor that I hadn't seen for quite a long time. And instead of having the right, upright thought about God's man, I was watching, I was not watching, obviously not very, very well, and certainly not praying. So I was taken in by the mortal senses and thought of feebleness and aging. He looked very, very different. And I said something to that effect. Well, I fell immediately, quite hard on the concrete. By then I was awakened enough to tell myself I could not fall out of the love of God. I was hurting, but I would make, managed to get up. And the fall woke me up, and I kept knowing the truth of my being, and the pain quite quickly went away. But the awakening to the right thought was extremely significant. And that's all I got out of this, the whole incident. I told myself never to be absent from my post, thinking rightly about what I see, what I believe, what I hear, and even what I, I feel. I thank God, thank Christ Jesus, Mary Baker Eddy, for Christian Science, the Comforter, which certainly instructs us as to how we can stay alert to watch, work, and pray. Thank you very much for all the testimonies. Happy to be here tonight. Thank you.